So welcome to TechnoDad Life and today what we're going to be doing is setting up Portainer so that we avoid future problems, make it easier on ourselves, and we go over possible errors and we'll show that by setting up a few containers. If you find this video helpful, make sure you like and subscribe and check out the links in the description below to support this channel. Okay, so first thing we need to do is go to our Open Media Vault and we're going to just go down the menu and fix any problems before they actually happen. So we're going to start out at System and we're going to go to Updates and just make sure we have any updates done. And for me, I've already done that. And then if you haven't already, make sure you install Open Media Vault Extras because there's a couple plugins we need. So the first one is Reset Perms. Type in reset in this top panel, click on that, click on install. Once that's done, come back here and type in Weddy. Click on that and then click on install. So we have our first two things installed. Next, we're going to go to Open Media Vault Extras, click on Portainer, and then click install Portainer. And then we can close that, click on Portainer again and then click open web ui and so for here we get to create a password make sure you write down the password click create user click get started click on local and so now we're into our portainer program so now we're going to go back to open me vault and create a user and make sure our networking is set up okay so if we go down to network we're going to go to interfaces, click on our interface, and then click the pencil icon. And so what we need to do here is create a static IP address. So for you, it should start out on DHCP. Change that to static. Put in the IP address of your server, and if you forgot what that is, it's right above right there. Netmask, so you'll have to go to your router for this, but normally it's 255.255.255.0. And then gateway is the IP address of your router. Then we're going to go down to advanced settings for DNS servers. We're going to put 1.1.1.1 and then click save. Next, we're going to click on storage and we want to make sure we have a shared file. And there is our shared file that's called data. And so we're going to be coming back here in a minute. So we just have to make sure where you know where it is. Next is users. And we're going to click users. And we're going to click plus and then create. And so we're going to create a new user called Docker user. And another password we have to write down. Next, where it says groups, click on that. And so we need to add three groups. So one is Docker. Then SSH, and then finally users. And then click Save. So what we're doing is creating a separate user that we're just going to use for our Docker containers. So next we want to SSH into our server. And we can do it uh, one of three ways, basically. So Weddy, Putty, which you can use on Windows. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to SSH through the terminal. And so to do that, you put sudo ssh root at the IP address of our server, click enter, enter in our root password, and now we're into the system. I'm going to type in clear. So now we're going to type id and then our new user, which for me was docker user, then hit enter. And so we need the uid which is 1000 and the GID, which is 100. And what I'm going to suggest is you go back here, click on your user and then edit. And then in the comments down below, you add those in and then click save. Because you know, next time that you do a Docker container, you're going to forget that. And this is an easy way to not have to remember it. Now we're ready to go back to Portainer. Now, to make your life easier, we're going to go down to Environmental Variables, click on Settings, and then Local. 
where it says public IP, we're going to type in the IP address of our server, which again is right there. And then we're going to click Save. So what that does after we've installed a container and we go to the Containers tab, it will list all the containers that are up and running. And there'll be a little uh, way to click on over to the right. And then that will open up the window and we can go direct to it. If we don't add in that IP address, then it doesn't work. Next, we're going to go to Settings. So right here, we're going to paste in something different that will show, put different templates in. And so if we go up to templates right now, you can see there are some templates here that are more for industrial users, uh, so not necessarily for home users. So we want to add in templates that will be better for home users. I'll leave a link in the description for this URL, which will load different templates, and press Save Settings. Now if we go back to App Templates, now when we go to App Templates, we can see there's a bunch of containers here. And so we'll just pick out one. So we'll go to Beats. And so let's set up Beats. So we have the name. The network is going to be Bridge. The PUID and PGID we looked up earlier. If we go back to our users, so for me it was 1,100. And we'll change this to 1,000. 100. Time zone, you have to know your time zone and for that you need to go to Wikipedia and there's a time zone database and then you scroll down to find yourself and so I'm America, New York and so it needs to be exactly like that so we'll just copy that, paste that there. You have to skip this whole section. Advanced options. So this will be the port that we add to the end of our IP address, so we get there. So it would be our IP address plus 8337, and we'll go to Beats. Container volumes are the volume that is inside the container that binds to the outside volume. And so this right there is not the name of our volume. So what we're going to do is go to Open Media Vault, go to Storage, Shared Folders, and so we need this absolute path. So we're going to copy that to clipboard, go back, paste that where it says volume one, and then do that every pl place that it says volume one. And then next we can actually click deploy container. And so that will download the container and install it. And there you can see it says success. And so going across the top, there's beats, it's running, if we want the logs, we would click right there. To then inspect the container, we click right there. And then the usage of the container, and then the processes down below. To log into the container and get to the command line, we go there. And then finally, if we need to attach anything, we would click there. This is the name of the image, so it's Linux server, and then the Beats program. When it was created, the I internal IP address, the Docker address of that, uh, no GPUs attached, and then Publish Ports is where you get to click on it. And then it will open up the Beats interface, which I picked one where there's not really too much at all. So not very exciting there. So let's pick another container and see if we can create a problem. So we'll go to Baby Buddy. Again, change this to 1000, America, New York. And so here is if you have a domain name attached to it. We don't need that. You can leave it, doesn't really matter. Show it advanced options. And here, if you look at the port numbers, we see 8000 is the port number. And so what's gonna happen is we're gonna have a conflict with that with Yacht, which is already installed. So let's see what happens when we do that. Then again, we need to change our volume. And then that's it. And we click Deploy Container. And here you can see it says Failure 500. And that means 
you have a port complex. So if we go to containers, we can see portainers on 8,000, uh, yachts on 8,001. And so you can see Baby Buddy was created. Now the easiest thing to do is actually just click that and remove it. And remember we can't use port 8,000 or 8,001. Go app, back to app templates, go to Baby Buddy, change everything back, change this to 8002, copy our disk ad address again. And so now the only thing we've changed is going from 8000 to 8002. Click Deploy Container again. So now we can see Baby Bunny is running, it's on port 8002. And I know Baby Bunny Buddy takes a long time to uh, load up. And so we click on that to see what the log files are doing. So it's still booting a little bit here. Now we can go to Publish Ports, click on that. And for Baby Buddy, it's admin, admin. So now we're into our Baby Buddy program. So a bunch of tips there about how to use Portainer and how to not to have problems and to make it as pleasurable as possible. And that last one, the most common problem with Portainer, which is the 500 error, which means you have a conflict with your ports. So I hope you found that all helpful. Uh, you take care today. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.